So good morning, everyone. My name is Sahar Mohammed Zeta, and I'm currently a senior at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. And yes, I'm a senior, so next year I have college plans. I'll be going to Harvard, and I'm really excited to be with y'all here today to talk a little bit about what it means to be a student involved in government. Now, government seems like a big people's game, right? It's all about adults, the people involved in them, but that's usually not the case. So to start off a little bit about me, if you want to know anything about me, it's that every single morning on my way to middle school, my dad and I would listen to NPR's Morning Report. Now this is just a really basic news podcast that gives you the lowdown on everything that's happening all over the world. And I loved listening to it, like this was the highlight of my day. And it wasn't until I started hearing a little bit of inaccuracies on the news that really started me to get a little flustered and frustrated. Um, my parents are immigrants, and I heard stories about their countries that weren't necessarily being interpreted in the right way. You know, I traveled there a lot, and sometimes the stories I heard in the media didn't necessarily, you know, relay with what my experiences were. So after that, instead of getting all frustrated and screaming in my car, my dad would tell me, Sahar, don't stress yourself. None of the news reporters can hear you from your car. And even though this was true, I took it upon myself to find other ways in which I could get my voice heard. And one of the main ways as youth in which we can be able to hurt on the national platform is through government. Now, I know what you're thinking, like how can middle schoolers and high schoolers make a big difference? Well, I mean, it's happening all over the world and it has happened throughout history, from the civil rights movement, which was mostly led by young college students, to the women's suffrage movement, which is led by high schoolers and women of all backgrounds, and even modern day, if you wanna look at the March for Our Lives movement that just ironically took place a couple weeks ago. We're seeing that youth involvement is critical, if not essential, when it comes to making changes in our world. But many times, we as kids don't know how to get involved with this. I mean, of course, there's always student council, but of course, we're always planning school dances or trying to have fundraisers, and we're never really getting involved in the real nitty gritty that is politics and government. Um, it seems in school we talk about everything but school and involvement itself. So after that, I really was wanting to find a way to incorporate young students' voices into the world. So the first way I did this was by teaming up with a couple of my friends back in eighth grade, and we came up with the Pritchard Committee Student Voice Team, which is a nonprofit organization that builds coalitions with students from all across the state. So we have people that are young as fifth graders all the way up until college graduates who are a member of this team. And over time, we've grown to about 100 self-selected members. And these are filled with students that are, one, interested in making a change, and two, are not afraid to use their voices to do so. We're self-selected, which basically means that we don't have any applications. We don't want a certain amount of pools to be accepted into this group. If you're interested in government and participating in it, you're in. The next thing you should know about this group is that we amplify and elevate student voices. So we're saying we don't want to completely overthrow teachers and politicians, that's not our goal, but instead we wanna be seen as partners in decision making. We want students to be on the same playing, on the same playing field as everyone else. So first and foremost, how can we do that in an effective manner? And the number one way in which students are experts is in the school system. I mean, who else spends 35 hours a week in the classroom every single week? You guys know more than anyone, possibly up in Frankfurt right now, than the current way that your classrooms are being run. You know what works, you know what doesn't, you know who your good teachers are, who your not so good teachers are. You guys are experts in your school system. So why not go to Frankfurt and talk to policymakers and legislators about this? And that's exactly what this group does. From talking about transitions from high school to college, to school climate, to the effectiveness of teachers, this team does all of this and more. So. One of the key questions that I like to ask when I give presentations to students, and I want you to raise your hands if you agree, that your opinions are taken seriously in school. 
And by this, I don't mean like, oh, my opinion on a paper, but if you ask a teacher to do a certain project, or if you are frustrated with the school dress code and you want to make a change, raise your hand if you think all of your opinions are actually heard and addressed in your classrooms. Not a single hand? You're kidding me. So what do you think that says about the school system as it stands now? We're not necessarily looking at students as partners always, no. And that's one thing that we'd like to be addressing. Now here's something else that I want to talk about. Stand up or raise your hand if you'll be 18 years old by May 22nd. You guys are? No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Middle schoolers, I have any high schoolers in here? <laughs> okay then, that's a, no, no problem then. So here's what usually happens when I ask this question to high schoolers. A few of them will stand up and they'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna be 18, I'm so excited, I'm gonna be an adult. And then I ask the next question, are you registered to vote? And then all of them sit back down again. So one, these are two things that I'm trying to get at with these questions. First, we're seeing that students are not being properly engaged in their schooling system. A lot of them are going through it without really, really asked what they want to do. I mean, I feel as if, I know you can agree or shake your head no, that when I'm going to school, I'm learning to study for a test, or I want to get a certain grade, and I'm not going to school just for the sake of learning and having fun and just genuinely enjoying time with my friends and my teachers. And because of that, a lot of the things that relate back to this, including student engagement, youth involvement in governments, and having a voice is strongly deterred, including voter registration. Now all these students are saying, okay, well, yeah, maybe I don't have a voice in my school, but how do I go about changing that? I mean, if you ask me about the cell or about history, I can give you answers. But when it comes to being involved in my schooling system, I don't really know what steps next. So that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about today. Student and voter apathy are becoming a very big issue. People aren't voting because they don't think their vote matters. People aren't talking about their perspectives because they don't think they're going to be heard. And this is just a fancy word for apathy. We're seeing this because you feel like it's not going to matter and it's not going to make any change. Why participate in it in the first place? To combat this, there are different levels of student voice and how you guys, even in middle school, can get involved with this. It goes from expression to consultation, partnership, and then foremost, activism. So let's talk about each, what each one of those mean. So first off is expression. Now this is simple. You're just expressing your opinion. This can go as far as rallying somewhere, protesting, creating art, or expression can even include giving your opinion to teachers, um, just gossiping at lunch even, like, oh, I can't believe we have to do this stupid project. But all of this involved includes expression. And the reason it's only expression is because you're talking, but you're not necessarily seeing any action occur afterwards. And that's where you get to the next step. Consultation. So consultation involves two different parties working together to create a big difference. Now consultation would be a teacher giving a survey or asking students in their class, what do you think is the best plan to go forward? Do you guys want to have a test or do you want to have a very a big paper or a project? Consultation requires multiple parts of give and take. So in this picture right here is when we visited a school a couple weeks ago and this is a teacher talking to students effectively about what they think the next step should be in improving the climate of their school. So the next step after that is going to be partnership. And this is just more than having a conversation or talking. Partnership is when students have formal permanent roles when it comes to making decisions. This can be student council president. This can be a cl president club that works actively with teachers. But most importantly, as you guys go on to high school, there's something that's called a site-based decision-making council. Now these are boards at every single high school that make all the decisions, you know, who's gonna be hired, who's not gonna be hired, what clubs are we going to have at school, what field trips are we gonna let students have. Those boards currently have no students on them in the state of Kentucky, and that's because it's not required to. If you want to have a voice, this is a really great place to get involved in, to make those decisions for your school. 
And last but not least, there's activism. This is where you're identifying problems, coming up with solutions. You're not just talking to your friends about bullying being a problem. You're making active steps to change it. And this includes talking to your principal, talking to everyone. And this is only in schools. There's so many more ways you can be active just besides your schooling system. For example, let's talk a little bit about state government. So if you have an issue with something that's going on or you don't like a legislation or policy, or if you don't like someone that's in office right now, who knows how you can go about changing that? No hands? Yes. Mm, that's a really good idea. So you can change the culture. And she said, um, make sure that the people know what the person's platforms are so you don't vote for them again. But let's say there's a current policy right now that you don't want passed at all, or there's something that you really, really love and want to make sure that it gets through Congress. What steps can be taken? Okay. Yes. Brilliant. He said to make sure that your opinions are known, start um, getting the information out, protesting. Yes, all the way up there. Yes, just talk to them. So what many people don't know is that Congress and Senate are forced to represent you as constituents. Even though you can't vote, you're not too young to have a voice. And this includes going to your legislators, going to your senators, make a meeting with them, send letters, send emails, have a phone call with them. These people are representing you. That's their job. So if there's something that you want passed in Congress, let them know. If you don't want passed in Congress, let them know. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or anything, just as long as you're making sure that you have a certain voice and you're making that voice heard in any way possible. So yes, that includes rallying, that includes protests, that includes support as well, writing and talking to congressmen, senators, and representatives. And all this information is out online. If you just search who is my senator or who is my representative in Google for the state of Kentucky, you're gonna be able to find them, have their bio, their email address, everything within a couple seconds. You know, the internet's amazing that way. So with that being said, I decided to take some of these ideas of activism into my own hands to give you guys a description of what it would look like if you wanted to get really involved. So with the student voice team, I went to all these different counties across the state in order to get a better sense of what it meant and what students were having trouble with in their schools. And I mostly went to high schools, granted, so one of the major points that they want to talk about that wasn't being discussed in school or policy and legislation was going from high school to life after high school. Now that includes college, that includes jobs, that includes anything really. But students felt as if high school was preparing them to get through their education system, but not for anything afterwards. Once you got your degree, the high school was like, okay, we're done, we're gonna let you go live your life. Which for some students is good, but others are completely left in the dark on what they wanna do afterwards with their life. So we start talking to students, having roundtables, coming up with solutions and ideas. And that's what led to our book that I published in October last year called Ready or Not. What's really frustrating with the current system right now is that policymakers and legislators are learning about all of your all schools through test scores, through surveys that they created, but they never know about the stories that come behind them. And this involves, you know, why aren't you succeeding in class? They'll look, oh, you just have a bad grade, you're not a very good student. But if they maybe talk to you about it, oh, I had something going on at home, or this class wasn't very easy for me to understand because I didn't have much time afterwards to think about it. A lot of high school students say, I have to go to work. I don't have time to sit down and study for tests when I have my family to feed. And because of that, all these stories and background knowledge behind our schools just go out the door. Instead, they're looking at test scores, ACTs, CATS testing, and don't really get to know the student, which is a really sad part. So in an effort to change this, me and my friends came up with this book, 
and want to sell it to people in order to get these stories out. We're giving it out to senators and legislators and representatives and listening, saying, hey, listen to us. We have stories to share and you have to represent us. And with this, hopefully we can start making some changes in our world. So obviously, not everyone's gonna go around the state and try to write a book about it. So here's how you can do it within your own schools. First off, don't think that you need like a club of 60 people to get this going. A few good friends of yours have similar plans or want something to be changed in your school. Like let's say you and a couple of your friends hate the dress code. Talk to each other about it, and instead of just complaining about it, come up with some plans that you can take for the future. For example, make a meeting with your principal or teacher and say, hey, this is the part I don't really like, and let's talk about how we can make changes in the future. That's the first step. The second step is cooperation. You're not always going to get your way, so don't think that once you start speaking your perspectives, it's going to happen. That requires a lot of compromise and a lot of work and talk. And don't be afraid about that. You're gonna get backlash and you have to work through it. And lastly, make sure that above all, you never give up. You're seeing that every single person's perspective can and will matter if you give it enough push behind it. If you're determined, if you have perseverance, anything that you're passionate about and wanna change, that passion will be relayed. Now. I don't know what you guys are thinking that you want changed right now. That might include school lunches or dress code or wanting a teacher to stop testing a certain way. But I know that if you guys just talk about it, to have solution-oriented plans instead of just talking about it with your friends, change is possible. And so with that, I want you guys to think about what you want to do with this, where you want to change, and do it. Thank you. Well, once again, thank you so much. Can we have another round of applause for Sahar? So Sahar, I have a question. So Ask we talked away. about being able to uh, get in contact with our representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, how would we get in contact with our representatives? Like uh, letter, email, carrier pigeon? <laughs> That's a great question, Cooper. So any way possible. So you can send emails to them, you can write letters to them, you can call them. They're so accessible these days that it's almost impossible not to be able to get in contact with your representative or senator. And here's a really important thing. In the office, every single legislator and senator is supposed to and mandated to make a tally of how many phone calls they get and what side they want them to represent. So let's say they get 50 calls from one, from 50 calls to support one cause, they're going to mark every single one of those calls and say, okay, these are the number of people that want me to support something. So if you guys are thinking, oh, what does it matter if a middle schooler reaches out to them? It really does. And a lot of people are like, well, how do I even start this letter? Say, dear Mr. or Mrs. Representative or Senator so-and-so, this is a policy that I really like, or this is something that I'm really unsure about. For example, one of my middle school friends last week was like, dear Senator Graham, I don't like the way that we're having metal detectors in our schools right now. Is that really necessary? And I'd like to talk to you more about that. Please reach out to me at this email or this phone number, and I'll be waiting to hear back from you. It's that easy. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank Give you a round of applause. Have an amazing day.